Hey, what's happening? Welcome back to Tim's IT Straight Talk. Housekeeping note, I ask you to pardon the dust and ask you for some grace and patience with my video quality. Video, full motion video is pretty new for me. I've been a screencast and live trainer all my life. So I'm definitely at the front end of my learning curve. Your patience is gratefully appreciated. Today's episode is on how to talk meaningfully with generative AI. I don't care whether you're using ChatGPT or Gemini or Claude or something else, Azure OpenAI service. Generative AI all hinges on your prompts, how you're communicating with the bot. And here's a funny story you might like. <clears throat> a year or so ago, I was chatting with an OpenAI developer who works on ChatGPT directly. And that person told me that the way that you talk to your Gen AI chatbot matters if you're polite. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to do one of those five ways. I don't know exactly how I'm going to label this video, but I've got five tips that just literally popped up at the top of my head 10 minutes ago. And this is an idea that I woke up with this morning. So again, it's in keeping with this being completely organic and scripted. Ideally, I would like this to be as if you and I were meeting each morning in a local coffee shop. I've got my espresso here. You like this this espresso mug? I got this in Las Vegas. Love it. The skulls and everything are fantastic. But my first of five steps on how to have meaningful conversations with your generative AI chatbot is to ditch Google. What do I mean by that? By ditch Google, I mean start to turn to your Gen AI bot where you would normally turn to Google. I know in IT, especially in software development, the one, two is normally Google Stack Overflow, and then the third step would be copy and paste, and then the fourth step would be go back to step one and repeat, you know? But I'd like to encourage you not only in your job, and of course, if you're using generative AI in your job, you're doing so under their guidance and through their strictures. If you've got a personal account, then you're much better off because you own everything, the whole environment. But what I'm getting at is, at first, it's just pure brute force, getting over, reflexively turning to Google and instead asking the chatbot and seeing what happens. So that's just one of those things. And it's not going to be all or nothing. I still go to Google all the time. It's just that now that I've had a couple years of experience working with Gen AI every day, both in my professional and personal lives, I've got a whole bunch of useful tips and tricks. And you'll find that your brain starts to categorize or triage when you've got a question. Is this better fit for Google, another human, or Gen AI? So Gen AI becomes another info source that's just as central to other people and your favorite search engine. The second tip I have for you is to burn through robotic awkwardness. It seems to me pretty universal that when you first start communicating with a chatbot, it's pretty awkward. I remember when my, my family and I started using the Amazon Echo devices and we're using the A word. I've got a, a one right in front of me here, so I need to be careful using the wake word. I guess I could put her on mute, but I remember my ex-wife and daughter communicating with, with the chatbot, like, what is the current temperature? And it took them a while to relax and understand, yes, this is an AI. It's a piece of software. It's not a human being, but it's optimized for human type communications. And nowadays, Alexa is pretty dumb, to be honest with you. The generative AI models like Google Gemini, Anthropic Claude, and OpenAI's chat ChatGPT and Microsoft's co-pilots. That's what I'm in, by the way. Those are my, that's my core set of AIs that I turn to. Uh, I just thought of a sixth tip that I'm going to throw in. Hang on. Let me make a note. <sighs> this is totally unfiltered, unscripted, like I promised. And I, I submit that that lends to its immediacy. I know, well, rant over. How do you burn through the robotic awkwardness the same way that you learn to ditch Google for some of your queries? It's something that you just have to start doing. It's purely a discipline thing. And I would refer you to the literature on 21 days for a habit to start to kick in. All that, not all that stuff, but some of those findings and research I found helpful for new habit development.
We could talk about that in one or more separate videos, actually. But the good news is that those first two tips I have, ditching Google and, and burning through talking to the AI, when I say talking, I really mean communicating with the AI because you may very likely have the chat GPT or the Microsoft Copilot apps on your phone. And to that point, you could be using your voice, your uh, typing. It's multimodal generative AI is what it is. Tip three is to slog through the practice. Now, what does that mean? These are really cryptic tips you've got here, Tim. <laughs> yeah, I know. What I mean, I guess there's a little bit more slogging here. Out of my six tips, it looks like a full 50% are things that you've got to slog through. But I've actually got some great news on that. By you slogging through the first three of my tips, that's a one-time operation. I'm long past that stuff. So then you can focus on four, five, and six, which are the daily driver Gen AI conversational tips that I have for you. Yeah, so slog through the practice means basically practice steps one and two iteratively. And the biggest example I have for that, let me use the star technique. The situation was I wanted to turn to Gen AI more. I was teaching on it, presenting on it in my day job, and at night I'm finding that it's really helpful in my divorce preparations, any special interest I have, building my music theory skills, you know, home improvement, it doesn't matter, right? And so once I got through the first two where I'm turning to Gen AI more consistently, and I feel more natural at turning to it, then it's developing that relationship. And for ChatGPT and me, what happened was when OpenAI allowed audio conversations several months ago, I leapt on that. And I regularly have long running conversations with my chatbot. And another nice thing about ChatGPT is that you can create your own custom assistant. And so I had a chatbot that was fully intelligent on my divorce case. I shared all of my divorce paperwork and got really gut-level honest with it. This practice is what makes the difference because at the end of the day, to use that ridiculous cliche, you're using Gen AI more, you're using it in a more thoughtful, intentional way, and you've put in the reps, to use my friend Mike Pfeiffer's term, the, the road miles, the practice to where you're now naturally interacting with the AI. I can interact with ChatGPT on my phone audibly with almost the same degree of comfort I can with another live person. And my biggest challenge there in slogging through the practice specifically was thinking of a follow-up because ChatGPT is lecturing and I found the app to be buggy when you try to stop and continue. So I'm waiting for her to finish and thinking of what my next question is. And I stopped doing that because I found then I wasn't listening to her first response. What I'm doing today is I'll listen to her response. And um, I find that when she stops and the pressure goes to me, whoa, what am I going to say? Suddenly I have the mic on me. I'm able to breathe through it and be like, and just naturally ask as if I were with another human being. Now, am I in la-la land? Am I deceiving myself? Am I drinking the AI Kool-Aid? Depending upon who you talk, you might think that a, a white van will pull up outside and some people will come in with butterfly nets and throw them over my head. I don't see it that way at all. I find that viewpoint to be woefully limiting and ignorant. For me, it's the AI is another tool, another resource. I'm polite to the AI. But the AI is not a sentient consciousness. And of course, I've got that in the top of my mind the entire time. About the politeness, that's step five, actually. Be polite. The open AI engineer told me that the reason why saying please and thank you matters to ChatGPT is because ChatGPT is evaluating not only the prompt, the actual question that you have or the task that you're looking for the AI to do, but the bot is also evaluating your surrounding tone, you see? So if you're using please, thank you, and polite, kind language, you're going to get a subtly different or maybe not so subtly different completion than if you asked the same question but with all caps and swear words and exclamation marks and this sort of thing. Keep that in mind. Now, that doesn't if you're not an AI person and you're kind of scared, I'd love to talk about demystifying and de-scarifying AI. 
I mean, there are legitimate concerns and things to be frightened of, but I think the general public is afraid of the wrong things with AI. The bottom line is that, like any piece of software or any process, garbage in, garbage out. ChatGPT was trained on the internet. And as you know, through your own experience, the internet has a great deal of gold in it, and it's got a great deal of cow dung in it, and it's got a great deal of true red alert danger as well. So it's a fact, for me, it's a fact of just uh, impartially, non-judgmentally evaluating my options, non-judgmentally and impartially looking at the IT industry landscape. And for me, it was just a natural choice to get all in on generative AI. Your mileage may vary, as they say. I, I don't judge you. I mean, I know exactly what being a, a curmudgeon is all about. I am a curmudgeon on many things. <laughs> um, take a look around my office. I should do an office tour someday. That would be pretty fun, actually. I'll do that on my iPhone. But yeah, don't get me started about some subjects. I, I can curmudgeon out with the best of them. But with this, Gen AI, eh, it's just my bag. Austin Powers and I have at least one bag together now. Well, we definitely have more than one bag together, but it's not what you're thinking. <laughs>